Uh, item number nine. Item number nine, called up consent calendar. There are no items on the called up consent calendar. Item number 10. Item number 10, resolution to adopt precinct changes. Chuck Brom and clerk and recorder. Mr. Clerk and recorder. Thank you again. Uh, Christian, if we can go ahead and bring up the uh, 2019 re-precincting. All right, 2019 uh, re-precincting. Under, um, under Colorado law, we are required, and this is the, the various Colorado revised statutes that we have to comply with with respect to that. We peri periodically got to look and look at um, how many active voters we have in our precincts. Uh, we have population growth. We're growing this county um, in the 2018 uh, midterm elections were historic, the largest um, ever in, in El Paso County and throughout the state. So we had a lot more people that are engaged and that needs to be included in that count. We have a statutorial requirement that says pe precincts can't be more than 2,000 registered voters. The, the kind of the, the sweet spot is somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. And we have a couple that have eclipsed that. Um, when they get to 1,500, we're encouraged to, to look at resizing them, um, but um, we can get authorization from your, your, uh, your board to, to have them over 1,500, but we definitely, when they get over 2,000, we're required by law to uh, make boundary changes. Um, the thing with where we're at in the decade right now, after you get past uh, a year and a decade that has the numeral eight or greater, so 2018, 19, um, we can no longer change the outside shape of boundaries because those boundaries are utilized for redistricting and reapportionment um, data for the census next year um, and then setting out new district boundaries and lines based on that. So what we're allowed to do at this point while we're over 2,000 is we're allowed to take a precinct boundaries and split them in half some way or threes, um, but maintain the integral part of that bo outer boundary, but we can split internally in that. We can't make new precincts, we can't make three out of two or anything, but we can take one and, and divide, it, divide it, and that's what we're looking to do today. Um, we also, when we do that, we need to um, make consideration for House, Senate, and municipal district lines, um, and then we always use where possible either natural, a stream, a cliff, a, you know, a rise, a ridge um, as a natural boundary or man-made boundaries like canals, ditches, uh, and, and roads to create boundary lines. Uh, when we do this, we look at overall number of precincts. We kind of use the Goldilocks concept. We want precincts that are not too small, but not too, too big. Um, with the passage of House Bill 1303 in 2013, because we are now in a hybrid all-male ballot state, precinct lines really do not mean all that much to election efforts. They're more for political party boundaries, for uh, um, picking precinct committee people and the likes. Because now voters can go to any voter service and polling center and get a ballot printed on demand. Um, but most are getting a ballot mailed to them. So having a precinct in a location near where they, they live is no longer a requirement. So these precinct boundaries are really, really for the political parties. Um, we look to make sure that we don't create any pocket precincts, small little uh, precincts. Um, so that's a consideration. The, the uh, 10 digit precinct number means something. If you see up there, the first digit always denotes the congressional district, the second two digits uh, from the left uh, comprise the Senate district, the next two are the House, um, the next two is the county, and then the last three are the precinct number. For those that like to know how that is done. We also divide up our precinct series by School districts, a lot of people know their school district boundaries. So precincts that are in the 100 series from 100 to 199 are in Colorado Springs District 11. The 200s are Colorado um, Academy School District 20 and so on. So you can see the various series represent various school districts. Um, what we are proposing today is dividing nine precincts and you can see there the, on the left-hand side the, the base precinct and that we're dividing that base precinct into two precincts, one that has the old number and the other one which will have a new, new designation. 
Here is the overall county map, and I know it gets pretty busy. There's a legend there that shows the number of voters. Uh, the ones in red are the ones that have, are over 2,000 or right at 2,000, and those are the ones that we will be dividing today, so you can kind of see uh, from the 40,000 foot level where, where those are at. And then I have the commissioner boundary lines there also. Uh, the next is that legend for your, your purposes. Anything that's over 2,000 is in red. So the, the hotter the color, the, the more close it is to 2,000. Um, here shows just those precincts, and it shows um, a legend on the side how many, how many voters are in those precincts, and then what it will look like once it's divided. Um, there is that data that uh, shows it in a little expanded form for, for people that are looking at home. And then here I'll hold in on a couple areas where, where we are dividing for your, for your information. So in Commissioner District 3, uh, just a little north of the Garden of Gods area and between Centennial and I-25, we have Precinct 207 that is being divided into Precinct 207 and 248. One precinct will have uh, 1,201 voters and the other one will have 86. And then um, Precinct 99 there, and 123, that is right across from UCCS. Um, that area there is student housing, some new student housing that's went up in the last two years. So that population is what is be, being considered there and the reason for uh, subdividing that precinct. In Commissioner District 4, uh, for Commissioner Gonzalez, we have, uh, they're just a little north of Fontaine between Powers and Grinnell, uh, the Fountain Valley School District area there. I think there's Watson Junior High in that area, and I think along Grinnell there, there has been some development over the last several years that uh, requires us to divide that into two. And then off of Mesa Ridge Parkway, um, there is uh, a division there. You know, there's now a Lowe's and a Safeway and uh, shopping centers and there's uh, Vista Ridge Apartments that is in there, so there's, there's a, a number of uh, things that are happening that's contributing to that increase in active voters in that area. And then in Commissioner District 1, along the interstate between InterQuest, where you got Bass, Bass Pro Shop, um, the north gate of the uh, Air Force Academy, all the way down to InterQuest, to uh, New Life Church and some of the developments that's going on on there, you know, the new In-N-Out Burger processing facility is going to be in there, which is a big love of mine. Uh, but you, and also on North uh, North Powers, you have growth that is happening there, and that's why we're um, dividing those precincts. I have a question. Yeah, uh, Commissioner, any, any questions? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So if you go back to the one slide, so that's an area that's just booming in growth, right? Wh which one in, in yours? No, in one. In one, yes. So economically and development, there's a lot of development going on right there. There is, there right. is. And we'll, and we'll probably be uh, subdivided probably several times in the, in the next uh, four to six years, I would, I would imagine. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Any other maps to yeah. show us? Um, this is uh, um, in Com Commissioner Vanderwerst District along uh, West Cheyenne Road near Ivywood. Uh, there's some redevelopment that's going on there, some townhomes and part apartments that are being done in that re redevelopment area and the, the, and the reason for dividing in that area. Um, so our new precinct count will be 291. That's an increase of nine new precincts and our office recommends that you adopt the new precinct map. So I, I understand, <clears throat> you know, we, we talked a lot earlier about uh, elections bills and um, you know, the need to uh, in, enhance uh, and enfranchise voters in the state of Colorado. We do a really good job of that, but we can always do better. But, uh, you know, kind of the other side of that coin is, you know, we need to be able to uh, do what we can to enfranchise citizens in terms of representation. And so one of the things I think that this board has done extremely well over the last several years, and uh, obviously with the uh, immense amount of work through the clerk and recorder's office, is make sure we kind of have equal populations mm -hmm. in equal commissioner districts. Yep. Um, is, is that going to be something we're going to be looking at moving forward? Uh, do we need to talk about that? 
because uh, it, you know, it, with all of the significant growth going on sure. in Commissioner Williams' district, uh, you know, it, it seems to me that she's going to have a whole lot more of the population than perhaps the other commissioner districts. Okay, um, I do have some data to present if you would like me to bring that up. Christian, if you can bring up the commissioner district data map, uh, PowerPoint presentation. All right, so I've just received recent census data update um, and can present that. Usually when we do pre-precincting, we also look, is there, is there an opportunity to do um, any adjustments uh, to uh, commissioner districts to make sure that we have a one person, one vote situation, uh, some, make some technical adjustments. So here is the latest census data. Um, it's done every 10 years, but they do approximations throughout the, the decade. Uh, I just received that within the last week, and we turned that information in our GIS, GIS area into this map, and it shows the five commissioner districts. Commissioner District 1, which is the northern part of the county, uh, Commissioner Williams District, um, is, is the largest at 144,079. Uh, Commissioner District 2, Commissioner Waller's district, is uh, just a little bit behind that at 142. Uh, 681, my eyesight's uh, I'm not making out that last two digits. Uh, Commissioner District 3, which is our west side, represents part of the downtown area and the western part of, uh, of the county, kind of aligns along I-25, is at 141 and change. Commissioner District 4 is at 142,658, and then Commissioner District 5 in the heart of the city and the county is at 140. 1517. As you can see, Commissioner Districts 2, 3, and, and 5 are real close in population. Uh, Commissioner District uh, and, and Commissioner District 4 actually are very close to each other, and Commissioner District 1 slightly, slightly higher. Um, here is it in a table format for you guys to, to look at. Uh, this is the districts on the side, the population, the deviation from the average. The average of all five commissioner districts is 142,452. Uh, the deviation from average, the highest amount uh, from the midpoint to what is district one is 1.1%. Um, deviation from high to low, from um, commissioner district five, which is about seven tenths below the average to the highest in district one, at 1.1% is 1.8%. So last time we examined um, commissioner districts was in 2017. We did that um, in 2011, 2015, and 2017 made adjustments. In 2017, this board made appropriate changes and realigned eight precincts to accommodate growth. And I think we did a, a very good job of anticipating that to get uh, a deviation of what we're at at 1.8. As you can see in 2017 and 15, we were at 3.1 and 4.1%. You know, the data for this, for this is not based on voter information, but on population, census population uh, information. So it's not off registered voters. So. Um, that's where we're at. That's the latest information that's come out. We're really compact. Um, I think we did a very good job of planning uh, the last two times that we did this in 2015 and 17 to be in an appropriate place. Um, so, I think Commissioner Vanderwerf has a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If we could go back, uh, I think it's one chart. It, you want that one or the map? I'd go one more. Uh -huh. Okay, so if you look at the number for District 2, 142,681, then go forward one. Uh-huh. And District, oops. Oh, you want to go, okay, yeah. that way. And then District 2 is not the same number. It's 14177 uh, on this I might chart. have, I, yeah, I did not update that. It's the 142. It's the 142. Yeah, I, I okay. apologize for that. I just, I, I just had recalled, um, I thought I, uh, 
was the district with the smallest population, even though they're still really tight, yeah. going with the smallest population. And then I saw a different number on yeah, a different chart, I, so I, I wasn't I, sure. I apologize and, for that. So We're but working I, from a couple of different sets of data, yeah. right? And yeah, I, I have in the last week updated that data. We were working with another data That's set. What I thought. And then I just got the new information yeah. this week, actually. So, And I appreciate you. Had, uh, we had chatted just, just before the meeting. Uh, let's see, if we go to the map, I think it's one, go back one further to the right. Yeah, this one here. Yeah. So, I mean, there is, there is an opportunity uh, where there could be a precinct move from one to three to have a little bit better balance, but you said that the actual deviation across the five districts is this 1.8%, yeah. and that's well within the state statute, so Correct. there's really no need to do Correct. that. Um, yeah, it's, it's not, not a requirement for us to do so. Uh, we are... We are, um, you know, 2020, we'll have a new census and we'll have data out in the next year or so after that. Um, our office is recommending just staying where we're at. Uh, so, you know, we're close to the 2020 census. Um, the deviation is small. There is some time constraints. If you wanted to make a small technical adjustment, um, it would be one precinct, I would think. Um, but um, I think that the data, I, I know a lot of county clerks would give their IT for being districts this, this close together. But that is, that is up to you, the board's purview if you, if you wish to do so. Um, but if we did decide to do that, we would need to um, do a, get some indication from the board here as to what to do. I would have to have um, public comment for 30 days and we have to get that done by July 1st. So very short time constraint to, to do that, to do it by, uh, I by think statute. That, I think I accept what you had described to me. The deviation is small. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to point out that we could do it, but yep. there is not actually a need for it. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other thoughts? Yep. Commissioner Williams. So in your first presentation, um, you have some precincts that, like, in... Commissioner Bremer's district that are the blue that, you know, are, are kind of shrinking in population? Mm -hmm. When is it that you can actually combine those precincts or redraw those lines? Is that after the census? Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I cannot do that at this point. Since a, after any year that ends in the number eight or higher, I'm restricted by, by state and federal law from doing any changes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good question. Anything else for the clerk and recorder? Thank you for that uh, right. outstanding information. It's All always right. incredibly helpful. All right, thank you. Um, so I, uh, we actually have a resolution. Uh, any other discussion from the board? All right, seeing none, could I have a motion, please? I'm, I'm, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I will move to approve the resolution to adopt precinct changes. And I'll second. That's been moved and seconded. I'll call the roll. Commissioner Vanderwerf. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. The chair votes aye. That passes unanimously with Commissioner Brimmer excused. Item number 11. Item number